quick one into what I'm going to cover today in an overview format. An overview is the word I will reiterate that I am using today. I'm going to cover what channels I believe that retailers must have to thrive in today's uh, business. Um, and that will cover websites, social media, influencers, email, digital advertising, and a little note on e-commerce and delivery at the end. And I'm going to try and cover for each just an overview of what the role of that channel is. The key performance indicators that we will use to see if you can actually measure your success on those channels and a, a quick update on content consideration. So that will be the overview I give today. Um, I like I said, I will pause throughout for, question, uh, for questions and I, I think Anne will just make sure that um, we cover those. But I guess the first question is, are there any questions so far? I ran through that introduction. So just checking. Um, yeah, I've got a quick question. Dominic here from Sporting Feet. Hello, Dominic. Morning, Izzy. Um, yeah, I just wondered how business has been. Um, you may come on to that, but uh, how business has been in uh, in lockdown? Yeah, it's been it's been interesting. I'm sure it has for <laughs> for us all. Uh, I think we're very lucky, and we consider ourselves a very lucky because we're part of the grocery industry. Yeah. So we haven't uh, struggled as much as other retailers have. Uh, however, it's been very very challenging to try and predict what customer behaviour is going to be and has been. Um, but I would say that um, we uh, it's been a struggle. It's not been it's not been really, really easy because people are really changing how they're buying. And because, as you'll see a bit later on, we don't have a well-established e-commerce platform ourselves at the moment in the UK. Uh, that has been one of the biggest challenges. Uh, however, we have put some other measures in place to kind of counterbalance that. But overall, yeah. I would say it's been positive. Uh, and I would say that we're just we're just lucky that we're part of the grocery industry. So uh, that's probably the state of play at the moment. Thank you. All right. So let's just go through some of these channels. Please do obviously ask questions as we go. Um, and obviously I've, I've paused at certain points so we can also feed in. So obviously website, I'm really hoping that all of you obviously have websites or have access to be able to have websites, but it's the role of the website is to basically have a base for your current or potential customers to go online. And it should really be a representation of your physical environment online as much as it can be. It really needs to reflect your brand uh, and an online space. And really the overall purpose of the website is to make sure that you're turning those online visitors into prospects, whether they're buying online or then coming in to visit an actual physical store. There's many ways of measuring how successful uh, a website can be for you. And these are just some of the key performance indicators um, here. So obviously the basics uh, are web traffic, page views, how long people are spending on the website. If you're selling online, how many of those people are then converting to a sale? Um, and what I would say is obviously you can go into so much detail on website analytics. And the great news is, is that if any of you are looking to uh, do a bit more analysis on the performance of your websites, Google Analytics offer a free service. So it's, it's totally there for anybody to use for free. Um, obviously you do have to share some of your web data with them, uh, but it's all GDPR compliant. There's no issues there. And I would just say it's a great base to just understand how many customers are coming to you. Um, hopefully you all have websites. Uh, and in terms of content considerations, Again, this will really depend on if you're selling products online or if you're just an informational site. Mainly, you need your content to be what we call sticky. So you really want to have enough content on there that really retains people's, people's return. You want them to stay on their page as long as possible. And you really want them to take an action from the content you're providing. And obviously, the way you do that is through great editorial. Video content is a must on a lot of channels now. Really, hiding, uh, really highlighting any of your USPs, your unique selling points. And again, the more imagery you can use, the better to really um, display your brand uh, front and center. One thing I would say is you must have a mobile optimized website. It absolutely still annoys me. If I go on a website and I'm still hitting a desktop only version of a website, I'm sure you guys all uh, totally understand that too, being consumers yourselves. But if you don't have a mobile, mobile optimized website now that you can make sure it's really easy to read on a very small phone, it's useless for a customer. It's not an enjoyable experience. And one thing that I definitely also would suggest is making sure that there is a chat facility available on websites. You probably would have seen this a lot more. We don't have it on Whole Foods at all at the moment. Um, 
but I absolutely, as a consumer myself, love having the ability to have a chat uh, on a website, uh, a really quick, easy conversation with it, whether it's a, with a computer, whether, whether it's a bot or a chat service or with an actual human being, it really does make that experience so much better. So they're just some content considerations. Our actual website for Whole Foods UK is very, very basic. We have quite a lot of uh, restrictions um, with what we can do with the UK website at the moment. So those of you who may have visited will see it's very, very basic. But also what comes with being basic is actually, it also does really focus on getting the customer what they want. Uh, when they want it. So we have a really, we have a mobile optimized site, which are these screen grabs here. Um, we make sure that we always have one key lead message and it's always at the top of our web page and it has a call to action at all times. We make sure the customer can get to the most important information as quickly as possible. And for this instance, because we're not selling online, it's these are, these are our stores. So a customer simply has to scroll once and they can see our store information. In terms of the US sites, um, the, some of the really high performing pages are uh, the sale information. Customers in the US love knowing for that week what sales they can get in their local store. And this really gives them the overview of what the products are, how much they're off and when they're, when they, um, when they're going to be discounted to. And I think as well, one thing to highlight is just having some really clear photography of product and what's becoming even more important, as you will know from customers, is really clear ingredient information, especially in the grocery industry. Not that it's just going to be legally compliant in a few months time with Natasha's law, but also customers really care about what's inside their food uh, more and more. And knowing allergens, ingredients are really, really important. And I think that's the same for whatever the product is. The more information you can give a customer about that product, the better, because it means they don't have to actually come and physically visit you in store because you're giving them that information online. I'm now going to dive into the deep, deep world of social media. It is a very, very um, heavy channel to cover in a very short webinar, but I'm going to give you a very top uh, overview of social media, if that's OK. Um, so the role is basically in business. Uh, it gives uh, marketeers within that business a way to communicate with peers and customers and potential customers in a really sort of lighter way. So it should be relaxed and conversational. It should not be that you're a formal brand. People are on social media mainly to connect with other people and influence some brands they like. And therefore it does need to be a lighter way of uh, you know, conversing with people. You know, you need to bring the human element to, of your brand through social media. And I've just got a couple of slides to just show how big social media is becoming. So this is the worldwide active users um, as of 2020. And across the world, world, you can see that Facebook and YouTube are still a massive. And I thought it was quite interesting here to pull out TikTok. I don't know how many of you are either on TikTok or use it, or maybe um, younger members of your family are using it. But TikTok didn't even feature in 2019's top uh, top 10 um, social media. That's the growth it's seen. In the UK, it looks a little bit different. TikTok is still on there, but actually LinkedIn is quite a massive, much more used in the UK. Uh, and I think from a business point of view, if you want to uh, succeed, LinkedIn is a great channel to make sure that your uh, business and your culture is communicated well. And YouTube and Facebook still are the primary uh, social media, uh, have the biggest social media users in the UK. Um, choosing the right platform is the ultimate question. That all depends on those four questions. Who are your audience? What are you selling? What do you actually want to need to communicate? And do you actually have the manpower and the labor and the time to manage the channels? You need to have somebody who's proactively on social media. So they can be reactive, responsive. And so that's why you don't want to, if you're starting out from scratch with social media, you don't want to have lots of channels. You want to really pick one that you know is going to work for your customer base. We are actually only present in the UK on three channels, uh, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Um, we, the US use uh, LinkedIn heavily to really promote career progression, team member experience, uh, any really big kind of corporate social responsibility. They use LinkedIn a lot. And we're currently discussing TikTok. It's a hot topic in debate at the moment about do we want to have presence on TikTok? Uh, but we in the UK only use those three channels. Right. 
And there are so many ways to look at how well you're uh, performing on social media. This is uh, the cheat sheet on the right here. It's just some examples. Um, I, I won't go through all of them because, again, it depends on which channel you're using and what your content is. For the UK, for the whole foods market in the UK, we really look at impressions. So how many times did somebody have the opportunity to see our posts? Uh, how quickly our audience is growing? And actually our average engagement rate. So how many people are interacting with our content that we're putting up on social? So that could be a like, a share or a comment. They're all part of the engagement process. If we had probably uh, more channels or we were doing more active selling through social media, uh, we would probably have a lot more uh, of these. We'll be using a lot more of these other social media KPIs. But it just shows there's an awful lot of ways that you can manage, the, manage to see how successful it is. Content considerations, again, really dependent on your social media channel. Um, but really, you just need to make sure your brand is portrayed on social channels. So you may need to take your existing brand identity and guidelines and adapt them slightly to be more informal if you need them to. I've put video, 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 because video is always what you get the best engagement rate from. Um, photography also, I mean, Instagram is all about using photography and using filters and really showcasing product in its best light. Um, making sure that you're using hashtags. So when people are searching under a hashtag, they can find you or you can be part of that trending uh, piece. Frequency is a big one. We have a lot of debate in Whole Foods about how often we should post. And actually we don't, you shouldn't really post too often. That's the overall piece. You should actually be posting less frequently uh, than daily. If anything, it should be two to three posts a week. Uh, and really it's about, again, when you're doing that. So depending on your customer base, you may find that Thursday evening is the best time to post. It may be Sunday afternoon. And you can find that all through social media reporting uh, about how often people are online and when they're most looking at posts. Um, if you put social posts up that you haven't put any money behind in terms of promoting, it's going to be very hard for customers to see because that's all about, unfortunately, Facebook um, putting an awful, awful lot of algorithms behind content to make people pay. So it's now a case of if you want your content to be seen, you're going to have to put some money behind it to get it seen by the right people. So it can be costly to actually put um, uh, money behind social media. We don't spend a lot. We just make sure we spend money to get it to the right people. And so it doesn't have to be a, a, a real a burden on your budget, but um, it will help you get that, that content seen. Um, just moving on to influencers uh, briefly. Um, so again, as part of um, social media, influencers are really part of this information channel. They inform potential customers about products, new developments, or even breaking news. Um, and I guess unlike advertisements, they're designed to inform. And that information comes from an individual who is organic and can be trusted by others, not the brand itself. So Whole Foods Market, although we're trusted, actually someone talking about how much they love Whole Foods uh, might be stronger. And again, they're paid for. No one does it for free anymore, unfortunately. Um, and the more heavyweight the influencer, the more they charge. Because now they're celebrities in their own right. They may have an agent. They may charge an awful lot. So we have you know, been looking at influencers uh, and, and often it's just really too expensive, uh, even for us at the moment. So it's just one to be mindful of. <clears throat> Um, again, the key performance indicators are similar to social media, but this is much more about referrals. So off the back of an influencer posting some content, how many people then maybe came to your website, how many more people bought the product they were talking about. Uh, and again, did, did you see any growth on your social channels off the back of their social posts? So some really um, useful KPIs there to look at. And again, some content considerations. It's a very light touch from the brand. An influencer has to decide how they want to promote your product and your brand, and because it needs to be from them. You can share a brief with them about what you'd like to get over, but it's up to them about how they then convey that uh, content. There is a slight risk, with always with using influencer, that they may not get it quite right, but that's the risk you have to take. You can go for low, mid or heavyweight influencers. Again, there's a cost relating to eats. 
to each and you can find influence relevant um you know influences so there may be somebody who just deals with fashion just with makeup just with gaming uh, we've done a lot with obviously sort of health uh, and foodie people separating those two kind of people out we also use quite a lot of third party intermediary intermediaries um so tribe is one of them so you upload a brief to tribe to say i would like influence to uh, submit content on this subject those influencers will then upload content uh, to show what they want to do. And then you can actually pick and choose which ones you use and you then pay them. It's a really great cost efficient way of really getting some great influencer content. Um, and this is an example here on the left. Uh, we obviously put a, uh, a brief out to say we want to have some people talk about how great we are for picnics and picnicking. And this is one of the influencers who uh, posted. And the US on the right have also recently um, launched a private uh, private label range called 365, and they engage with lots of different uh, influencers about a, what they're calling home ec program. Uh, and so they really engage with lots of little influencers to do videos um, for them as well. So it's really, again, really useful content, really useful channel, but it depends on the budget you have. So any questions so far on web? social or influencers i think we need to keep going we're slightly okay. running over izzy that's all good email <laughs> hopefully everyone's got email so this is how you reach out to customers and prompt a visit again key performance indicators there send volumes open rates and so forth uh, and really all i would say is make sure uh, it's all about call to action so you want to get that through to your website again must be mobile optimized Here's some examples from the US in terms of what we're pushing through, making sure it's really snappy, really um, focused. Digital advertising, I won't, I'll share this on rather than talk through it basically, but this is something again, if you've got smaller budgets but you wanna reach people, digital advertising is a great way of doing that because you can target people who are walking past your store. So one to look for, I will zoom through this bit and you can follow up. Some more KPIs here. Um, the only problem with digital advertising is usually very small. The size you can use is tiny, so it's a really not great format. So that's just something to be mindful of. And then very lastly, I just wanted to quickly talk on e-commerce. So uh, like Anne was saying, um, you know, people shopping online isn't going away. It's a habit that's now been built. And I've just put a, a quote here from the recent uh, British Retail Consortium in terms of uh, the fact that there's been the highest uh, on record sales online. Um, versus the average three months. Retailers who haven't had online presence have really suffered during the lockdown and customers have created a new habit. And I've just put a quote here from some recent insight that our US team provided, which was basically um, um, before the pandemic, uh, customers, Whole Foods customers were spending barely 10% of their budget online. And now since the pandemic, it's about, it's, it's about 50%. Wow. So that just shows how different it is. And I think that obviously with the US, they're slightly behind, to be honest, I think, on online shopping. So that's probably even a heavier, bigger figure for the UK. I would just say, though, as much as e-commerce is amazing, it is a huge cost for a business. Yeah. The operations, logistics, labour, data and maintenance is absolutely massive. And one way I think that you can have a consideration of this is like we have is we've just gone live with Deliveroo. Because we don't have an e-commerce platform, because it will take us a long time to get it live, in order to allow customers to buy from us online, uh, we've partnered with Deliveroo uh, for a trial. So we're in a trial phase at the moment. We've got a small online uh, catalogue available. People who are within a three to five K distance from a store can order from us. Um, it's driving some amazing sales, even for our smallest stores. Uh, it's, it's taking about 25 minutes from a customer ordering to get it delivered, which is an amazing feat if you think about it from a customer point of view. We're seeing really strong basket size. 72% of the customers are repeat visitors and they're shopping in the evening when they're either bored, stroke, hungry. 